everyone. I'm Heather. And I'm Brett. We're going to take you on a tour of how Google Earth and Google Apps can help you move through the stages of the SAMR model. From using technology to enhance your classroom, to transforming the learning opportunities that you offer your students. Let's get started with substitution. Substitution involves the direct replacement of one technology for another. We'll begin by demonstrating how traditional maps can be replaced by Google Earth, and how a traditional notebook and pencil can be replaced by Google Docs. In each of these scenarios, the original task has not been modified. We've simply substituted one technology for another. Using Google Earth instead of a traditional atlas is an example of substitution. The software can replace an atlas, but when it isn't used to its full potential, it is still just a way to simply view maps. This substitution may initially appear to be slightly more exciting for students, but when that novelty wears off, it is still just a substitution of a book for a computer screen. Many of us have also taken advantage of Google Docs as a replacement for other word processing softwares. While any of these software platforms represents a substitution for the traditional paper and pencil, it's important to remember that this switch is only superficial and doesn't change the nature of the work in which students are involved. The drawback to substitution is that eventually the novelty of substitution wears off and students see that the learning activities are essentially the same as they've always been. Students may feel as though the technology is not actually benefiting them. So let's move along and look at augmentation. Augmentation is the next step up. In this stage, the technology that we incorporate into our learning environment not only serves as a replacement, but also serves to enhance the learning experience. Augmented resources or facilities make our lives easier by making us more productive and enhancing the overall quality of our work. Google Earth makes our lives better by incorporating a series of tools that we can use while functioning within the designated learning environment. Rather than needing a map, a pencil, and a ruler, these tools are all provided digitally within the program. Google Earth enables us to focus on the target goal, in this case finding the distance between two landmarks, making our work easier. Extending beyond Google Docs, the host of other apps offered by Google can also help augment the learning environment. While tools like Spell Check and a variety of different formatting options can help us boost productivity and enhance the quality of our written work, apps like Google Spreadsheet can help us produce more accurate data tables and graphs in only a fraction of the time. As we've seen, augmentation is a significant step up from substitution as it provides a functional improvement. This added benefit gives value to the tools and creates a more effective learning environment in which students can focus on specific learning tasks and feel confident that the tools they're using are worthwhile. Modification helps us transition towards true transformation. By modifying the learning activities our students experience, we provide them with new ways to access knowledge and understanding. These modified activities are not simply the old activities with new tools, but completely redesigned activities made possible by the tools now available. Google Earth enables students to virtually visit different places around the world. Students can now explore parts of the world that may be too far away for a traditional field trip, too costly to be realistic, or even too dangerous due to a circumstance in the region. Google Earth can break down the traditional barriers, allowing the learning experience to be completely redesigned. Google Apps have enabled similar modifications to the learning experience. Students are now able to collaborate in real time using Google Docs or collect data using Google Forms. Imagine how much more effective a student survey would be if they could deliver 500 questionnaires online rather than having to do the same with paper and pencil. It's clear that these technologies have enabled the redesign of student learning opportunities. The ability to collect and share information in such a seamless and productive manner is exactly the platform needed for us to take the final step to redefinition. Here we have significant task redesign. Redefinition is the ultimate technological benefit. When we reach this stage on the educational ladder, we can be confident that our students are engaged in constructive learning activities that are challenging them to use real-world skills within authentic learning environments. Redefinition is described as the creation of completely new tasks, ones that weren't possible using the previous technology. In the case of Google Earth, students can create their very own narrated tours of a place that would otherwise be inaccessible. Or, as seen in this example, the students could map out Anne Frank's whereabouts and narrate her story. These tours can then be shared online, opening up the opportunity for others to share in this experience. 
The sky is the limit when using tools like Google Apps. Imagine a world without Wikipedia and consider the simple premise upon which it was built. A globally collaborative effort, Wikipedia has brought together contributors from all around the world to build the world's largest online encyclopedia. Could this happen in your own class? All of these learning opportunities have been made possible by technological tools like Google Earth and Google Apps. These cloud-based platforms have enabled students to join a global community of learning, to access resources anywhere in the world, and to better understand their world in the process. Let's have one more look at the SAMR model, substitution and augmentation for enhancement within the classroom, modification and redefinition for the transformation of learning experiences. Often the SAMR model is viewed as a linear process, just as we have outlined in this presentation. However, is it truly linear? Perhaps it is really more of a never-ending cycle. When one finally is able to redefine teaching with available technologies, they start over at dabbling with the latest resources. Where are you on the cycle? Dabbling, substitution, augmentation, modification, or redefinition? Technology should be invisibly woven into the curriculum and day-to-day -day learning. It's not just a tool. It isn't something separate that we learn in isolation. It can be a whole new environment. When the technology transforms the way we learn, offers us new, unchartered experiences and opportunities, it's much more than a tool, but a whole new environment.